Not everybody's as lucky as you. Not everybody's lucky enough to always be able to work on their quads here on a nice bench with a nice lighting, with a nice big desktop soldering iron plugged into the wall. No, some of us have to make our repairs in the field. We have to go out to a bando or a field or a park and when we break something, rather than be done for the day, we just get our little portable soldering iron out and we solder it up right there in the field. Some of us travel. We go on trips and we want to be able to take a nice compact soldering kit with us and have everything we need to fix our quads. And if you're one of those people, I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. I've been traveling with drones since the beginning of 2018 and I have spent a lot of the time since then figuring out what stuff I want with me in my bag and what stuff I can afford to leave behind. And I've developed what I think is a really, really good portable soldering kit. So today I just want to show you that stuff. There will be links to all of the stuff down in the video description if you want to pick it up for yourself. Uh, I've got a couple little oddball items that I bet you haven't heard of before. If you're wondering what this bag is, I'll tell you at the end of the video. Let's start with the soldering iron. The soldering iron is the Penicil, the Pine 64 Penicil soldering iron. I've got a full review of this out on my channel. I'll put a link in the video description if you want to check it out. It is very similar to the venerable TS100, but it has a couple advantages. Uh, the menu, the processor is more sophisticated. There's actually an open source project. We're developing features and firmware for this uh, soldering iron. The uh, So it's got features that you normally have to flash custom firmware to get in the TS-100. That's a small thing. And the thing that really drew it to me was that it has both USB-C and uh, barrel plug power input. So you have dual power input. Uh, I broke the barrel plug on my TS-100 and was kind of annoyed at that. USB-C might be more durable. So you got some flexibility there, but it still uses the same soldering iron tips for the TS-100, which is good because these guys are available practically everywhere and they're only about 10 bucks a piece. The tips that I travel with include a D24. Uh, this chisel tip 2.4 millimeter is my go-to for almost everything. In fact, I almost never even take it out of the iron. Uh, for very large joints, I'll use this large bevel tip and I basically never use these conical tips, although I keep them in my bag because they don't weigh hardly anything. And occasionally you might have a very, very fine joint you need to get in on, but I actually really hate the conical tips and uh, the chisel tip is really my go-to. Now for powering the soldering iron, you've got a couple choices. One is this XT60 two barrel plug, which can run off of any of your XT60 batteries. The soldering iron can be powered from 3S up to 5S technically. Technically it can't take a 6S, but many people do and many people get away with it. Um, but you can run it straight off a battery or if you have a USB PD, you need a USB PD adapter power delivery that'll put out between 12 and 20 volts. Uh, it should be rated between 30 and 60 watts. More is better. If you just have a little uh, USB quick charge phone charger, it'll power the soldering iron up, but you can't actually solder off it. So I actually just purchased one of those from Race Day Quads that's supposed to do 20 volts and 60 watts, but it hasn't come in time for this video. And again, I'll show, put a link to it in the video description if you want to try it. In addition, if you choose to power this from USB, I suggest you get a silicon coated USB power cable so that if you like touch it with your soldering iron, you don't damage it. Now, the XT60 cable that I've got is a very, very nice braided one. Uh, you don't have to get this one, but I thought, you know, may as well get a nice braided one if I'm going to be a little more flexible and stuff. It will be damaged if I touch it, but mm, needs must. Well, you can't solder without solder, and my solder of choice is Kester 6337 0.031 inch diameter uh, rosin core solder, leaded solder. This is my go-to. You can use lead-free uh, and you can use 6040 instead of 6337. That's up to you. But the thing I like most about this is it's in this nice convenient case where you just kind of pull out what little bits you need. You can see I'm getting low. I may need to get some more pretty soon. Uh, and this is really just, this is all the solder you could need. You build a whole quadcopter with this if you needed to for any trip of any reasonable length. This is going to be plenty and it fits easily into that bag. 
the key to good soldering is good technique with a good soldering iron and good solder. But the key, if you don't have any of those, is flux. You need flux for soldering. You can get away without it, but it just levels up everything and makes everything easier and better. And my preferred application of flux, especially for travel, is a flux pen. Uh, so this, it's basically just a marker pen and uh, you sort of dab the tip and it wets the tip and then you wet the stuff, paint the stuff on to your solder joints. The one that I have here is from SRA Soldering Products and it's fine. The key thing that you, there are other brands and they're fine too. Uh, the key thing that you wanna look for is an alcohol-based no clean flux. So uh, the not no clean flux you have to clean off. It's acidic and it can damage the boards and it can cause short circuits. So you're supposed to come after with a Q-tip and alcohol and you're supposed to clean it off. Uh, who got time for that? Especially when you're traveling in the field. So I suggest strongly that your flux pen be alcohol-based, no clean flux, and then you're still technically supposed to clean it, but it's not gonna hurt anything if you don't, and I seldom do. This is one of the things in this kit that I am most proud of. And before I open it up and show you what's in here, would you mind going down and hitting the like button? Just hit that thumbs up. It would mean a lot. Thank you. Uh, what's in here is nothing special, but the case is actually the thing I'm most proud of. So what's in here is a brass cleaning sponge for your soldering iron tip. And this is, I think, the best way to clean your soldering iron when you're on the road. You can use something like a wet sponge, but then you gotta find water. And if you don't have water with you, or if it's not convenient, then what are you gonna do? Then you got a wet sponge that you gotta deal with. What a hassle. This, completely easy to clean up, totally dry, keeps gets your uh, iron tip clean. And the reason that I'm so proud of this container is you end up with a whole bunch, I just cleaned mine out so I can't show you. You end up with a whole bunch of little metal flecks in, in your sponge and then they come out in your bag and then that's, you know, they're just all over the place and it's a mess. Uh, they could even get into stuff and cause short circuits and damage. So this is a screw top container that I bought from Amazon. I had to buy like three different kinds to find the right size. And then I, it was only available in like a bag of 10. So I paid like $12 for this one case that I don't, I didn't even need all the other ones, but I'll put a link again in the video description. Since it's screw top, it's nice and thin, fits in the bag and keeps all that mess nicely contained. And it's metal, so if you touch it with a soldering iron tip, it's not gonna hurt anything. This stuff is called Blue Tack, and it is great. It's great for a lot of things, but it's great for soldering. It's pliable. You can stick it to almost any surface, and then you can stick a flight controller on it, or you can stick a wire in it and just basically use it as a third hand in just about any situation. I actually don't travel with this, but I kind of think I should. Ho, 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 ho. Now this is my travel multimeter. And look how, look how small it is. It's so small, it fits right in the bag. It doesn't take up much space. It's got a flip out cover, right? And the leads go inside the flip out cover so that you don't, they're not getting loose and tangled all in your bag. And they just pop out like that when you're ready to use them. Uh, it has all the functions you would want from a multimeter. And it even has capacitance measurement, which some of my bigger multimeters don't have. You wanna test a capacitor to see if it's gone bad. Or, or if you don't know the capacitance value, it can do that. Uh, it's good enough to get the job done for basic troubleshooting in the field and very easily folds up. And then it all goes nicely in this bag. Don't put the soldering and wiring away while it's hot. It will ruin your nice bag. Everything goes nicely in here and goes in my backpack. And then anytime I need to work, I'm just, look at that, look how nice that is. I'm just ready to go. All right, the bag. When I first got these bags, I did a review of them and I got so much flack from people who couldn't believe I was doing a review of just a dumb bag and from people who couldn't believe how expensive the damn bags are. Uh, but I love them and I've bought three of them since uh, I got this one as part of the review. And if you wanna know why I love them and how much they are, I'll put a card on screen with a link to the video. Uh, in the meantime, if you wanna pick up any of these products, there's links in the video description. They are affiliate links and that means I get a small commission when you click that link. It's an easy way for you to support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.